Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, and thanks for watching another weekly video. First thing we're going to do today is some vertical uphill welding lap joints using 7018 rod. And the first one is going to be 7018 332 2.4 millimeter using a Lincoln Excalibur uh, rod with about 80 amps. But the dig function set on 77 so that I can keep a nice tight arc without sticking. Now with a 332nd rod on a quarter inch, uh, that's about 6 millimeter thick material. But using a small rod like that on this thickness material, sometimes it helps to do a little bit of an oscillation. So what I'm doing here is just kind of like tracing the front of the puddle, going straight across and then looping up again. Tra not trying to make big steps, just trace the front of the puddle. And that allows me to have a decent looking weld, but a, a quite a few tie-ins on an 8 inch long joint like this. Like there's going to be at least a couple of tie-ins using that small of a rod. And that is the trade-off. Smoother, smoother weld a little bit, a little bit easier to control the puddle, but a lot of tie-ins. So what we're going to do now is use a 1 8 or 3 millimeter rod and not do hardly any oscillation at all. And we have much, much fewer tie-ins and a little bit different looking weld, but hardly moving the electrode at all. Just poking it in there and just, you know, any movement that you see is probably just my heartbeat, <laughs> me shaking working around the camera, etc. But I'm not trying to move it at all. I'm just basically trying to drag it up in a nice steady fashion, holding a tight arc and trying to keep the rod angle pretty steady at, at you know 90 degrees in there. A little bit of a push works fine too, but I think if you try to keep a 90 degree angle, you will often have a little bit of push without even realizing it. That has been my experience anyway. And for that joint, I ran it at 100 or 105 again with the dig set on 77. And from the looks of it, I should have kept it poked in there a little tighter. Got a little undercut on that one edge. All right, let's have a little fun now. This is still stick welding, but you've probably heard about this little trick where you can set up a stinger to burn without touching it, burn a whole rod. And that's what I'm doing now. I've got the cable clamped to the table with a little pony clamp, and I've got a 7014 uh, 1 8 rod in there. I haven't really run a whole lot of 7014s, but I figure it's a good way to see if it runs good. Just let it run by itself. Even with a bad angle, but with the dig set on uh, 77 and an amperage at about a uh, 107, it's it's going to make a decent looking bead because it's it's about as steady as you can get. As that thing burns off, the rod gets shorter. It just kind of it just kind of runs itself. So I'm going to let that whole rod run out here. Hopefully, I'll catch it before it runs off on my nice precision welding table. That wouldn't be too cool. If I ran a bead on that thing. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it here. And I'll grab it before it gets to the end. And we'll see what it does. Again, I got the dig, the dig function on the Dynasty set on 77. Amperage on 107. 1 8 rod. 7014. And uh, even with a crappy, really, really uh, steep, steep rod angle. Um, it definitely laid a, a uniform bead down there. And if you play with this, you can get rods to burn where that slag just peels off uh, really easily. It's just a gee whiz thing I thought I'd include, just a little fun trick. Actually, the reason I bought the 7014s in the first place was that I got an email from a guy recently who said he thought I should include some, you know, cheaper stuff like a lot of people have in their garage, like a buzz box and a cheap Chinese MIG welder with a self-shielded flux core. So I'm going to actually build a couple of projects using the bare bones stuff like that. And so that's why I went to Tractor Supply and bought these. All right, just a little uh, added bonus here. This is some stuff I've shot recently. This is coming off the bottom of a 6G 2-inch pipe with a 332nd 7018. This is about at 85 or 90 amps. That's usually a good amperage to run a, uh, a 7018 332nd 2.4 mil millimeter. Also, a little tip for you, that's a good amperage also that 6010s and 6011s run at. So if you're doing uh, projects and all you got is a stick welder, you can keep both in a pouch. You can use 6010s for tacking because they light up a lot easier and then weld them in with a 7018 without having to change your amperage because they both run pretty good at, at that amperage. All right, that's one pass, one side on that thing. I'm trying to just not spend a lot of time here, but I'm going to show you several things from stick welding videos that I've done over the past year or so. This is just uh, you know a, a common test for people to take to get a job as a boiler maker or pipe fitter, especially boiler makers. This two inch schedule eighty is very popular test TIG root, second pass TIG, and then and then uh, finish it up with a stick. So this is the cover pass using the seventy eighteen stick once again, keeping a nice tight arc, trying to keep that rod 
pointed basically toward the middle axis of the pipe all the time. So you're having to reposition your body all the time to keep your rod angle like it should be. That means twisting your wrist or doing whatever it takes like I'm doing here to keep that rod poked in there straight. That's one bead around the bottom. I mean from the, from the bottom to the top and you see I got a little bit of a lump on the bottom but probably not worth fooling with. And uh, now it's just going to take one more bead to finish this up. So I'll give you a little peek of that and then we'll move on to something else. That second bead, same thing, same heat. You just want to try to really watch the top to avoid undercut and really uh, poke it in there to, to especially to burn out any slag that might be in there that you didn't file out or whatever. But mainly it's just uh, you got to watch the top of that go up at a nice even travel speed. And you don't want any low places and you don't want any undercut. And again, that was uh, Lincoln 7018, 2.4 millimeter, 330 second rod. Now, overhead stick welding. This is an overhead joint using a 1 8 rod around uh, 3 millimeters. And uh, for overhead, a lot of people want to turn it down. I think you should run it about the same as you'd run it flat, good and hot. This is running about 129 amps is what the setting on the machine was. It's probably 125 to 130. But good and hot with a good tight arc and not much rod angle, we'll, we'll use the arc force, utilize the arc force to help that puddle flatten out instead of droop and sag like it might if you got a real wimpy arc trying to cut it down and, and weld it cold. It's been my experience anyway. Overhead it welds about the same as flat if you want good results. Make a nice, uh, you know, not any hotter than flat necessarily, maybe just a tad colder, but pretty much the same as you'd run it flat, same technique. Rod angles are big, a big thing. Just don't get carried away with rod angle. Keep the rod poked just a little bit of a drag angle. Straight in is good too. In a, in a pinch, sometimes you can even push, you know, depending on if something's in your way, but you just don't want to get more than about five degrees one way or another. Good tight arc run you know plenty of amperage and also if you have a dig function uh, on your machine like this dynasty does set it up kind of high i've got this set on around you know between 70 and 100 and you see it, it makes the bead widen out flatten out push in there and burn in and uh, just things go better and it's been my experience anyway things go a lot better than if you try to turn it down to uh, keep it from from drooping now if you go too hot there is a limit obviously if you try to set a 1 8 rod at a you know 160 amps or something it's gonna it's gonna sag it's gonna, it's gonna wind up on your feet but within limits about the same as you would weld flat works good here I'm using a 332 rod at about 90 to 95 amps 2.4 millimeter and that's a three bead overhead overhead t-joint right there you know total of probably uh, six beads root pass then two over that all right when is stick welding better this this job came in a couple years ago guy had already tacked it up with TIG but he didn't clean anything and the TIG tacks had all kinds of porosity he even blew a hole with the TIG so it's either cut it apart clean it do all that stuff or for what it was just a stand to put a bender on grab some 7018 rods and crank it up good and hot and burn out all those nasty tacks and, and it's done so that's what I did. Now that's that's one instance when stick welding is better. Um, you can burn through mill scale. You can burn through some light rust, and um, also some ugly tacks. You know, if you got if you got bad tacks, MIG welding over top of tacks that have porosity in them, you're going to get more porosity more than likely. With stick, usually you it goes right right through it. The slag compensates for any crap that was in those tacks. Things just come out better. Here's the bottom flange of that same bender. And what I do on, on, on jobs like this is I try to back step. So I'll start off on one corner if I'm stick welding or MIG welding. I'll start off on one corner. I'll weld all the way to the other corner. And then I'll, and I'll, back, I'll go backwards and then tie into where I just started. So that each corner basically has a tie-in on it. And I don't have any tie-ins on the, on the long runs. And it generally, it generally works well for distortion. It winds up being straight as well as it's got a decent look to it. You don't have any tie-ins on that nice looking bead. The tie-ins are only on the corners and they look like they belong there like that. So, Also situations like this stick is a lot better. You know, I've run into several jobs lately on drawings where they just didn't leave enough room to get a MIG gun in. I mean, I had lugs like this. This is a mock-up right here, but I've had several jobs lately that this, this is the situation. Like, they expect you to weld it. The weld symbol calls for weld all the way around, but there's no way you can get a MIG gun in there to weld it all the way around. Well, a stick rod is a lot skinnier than a MIG gun, a whole lot skinnier. So a stick rod will fit in there very easily. 
you don't you don't necessarily get the best you know the most favorable angle and then you got to get in there and, and clean off any bb's that might be in there but you can get a weld in there and you can get a decent looking weld in there so that's another instance when stick is just better see i got some i got a few bb's in there this is again using the 7018 ac 7018 design for use with the ac using this little lincoln ac buzz box here also called a tombstone welder And then here's just a regular old 7018 run with one of those new multi-process welders. This one is a Thermal Arc Fabricator 252. Again, I've got the dig set up kind of high uh, in, the, in the high 70 range. And that's just what I like to do. A lot of people like to run 7018s with the dig set up uh, 20 or 30. So it's a nice smooth buttery arc. But I just like to uh, set it up higher and then, uh, and then just kind of drag the rod, let it rest with a really tight arc and that that usually works out pretty well for me I've seen plenty of people that make it work really well with the dig set lower too but that's just my preference and that way again that was a 1 8 um, 1 8 70 18 and here's coming coming across uh, with a, a second a second bead stacking in there a total of three beads on some thick metal here probably running about 125 to 130 amps. All right, a little quick commercial time here. For those of you who might not know, I make a video every single week. And so every at the end of the year, I put them all together on DVD and offer them up for sale to help help pay for the materials and time spent making the videos every week. Well, still got some of these 2012 DVDs left. Also, still got the 2011s. And we package them actually both together now. If, if you want to save a little money by buying buying both, but they're they're uh, over seven hours worth of, of welding videos, and that's because it represents a whole year's worth of work. So there's four discs. It took four discs to get it all on, and they're they're a whole lot of TIG welding and a whole lot more. So there's stuff like this open open butt uh, V groove TIG weld lay wire. There's a uh, 6G test tips root pass hot pass TIG with a stick fill. There's actually three videos total walking you through that 6G test. There's plenty of other TIG welding stuff, TIG welding 4130 and uh, aluminum. Again, a little bit of plasma cutting on some thin stuff like this, a little bit of plasma beveling, quite a bit of MIG welding, a little bit of MIG troubleshooting, what it looks like when you don't have enough wire, too much wire, etc. And just some, some, some MIG projects, building parts, and some technique, techniques used, and even some... Uh, aluminum spool gun welding a couple of projects using aluminum spool gun the uh, the 6g test that you see this this stick portion is on is on the dvd the three-part series that is on 6g including the stick and then also just some plain simple stick welding using an ac buzz box and don't forget if you buy the 2012 dvd or the the bundle with the 2012 and the 2011 there is an additional bonus dvd that's not found anywhere on youtube it's a a TIG welding jump start DVD to get you started off on the right foot, running beads, running some joints, and lots of tips and stuff. So I appreciate you watching once again, and we'll see you next week.